Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. We have an absolutely fantastic episode today. We have Tina Michelle Briggs, a fellow member of the Reality Revolution. You've definitely seen her in chat. She's been a big supporter of my channel. And so I wanted to spend a little time talking about crystals. Crystals have been talked about in spiritual circles forever. You can find all kinds of books on crystals. I really haven't discussed it on the on the podcast. It's sort of a blind spot for me. Can crystals be used to heal? Can we use crystals for meditation? What effects do they have and how do we use them? So I brought in a fellow expert, Tina Briggs, who's going to talk to us about her um, company, ATX Crystals, and her experience and spiritual journey. So welcome to the Reality Revolution, Tina. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. So yeah, I see you on Facebook all the time. You, you're, you're selling so many different kinds of crystals. You talk about crystals. You're a crystal healer. Um, let's go back and get your origin story. What what uh, inspired you to get into crystals? And, you know, beyond that, what, what got you to this point? Um, so when I was a little girl, I used to go with my grandparents to Albuquerque and we would go into the little ghost towns and look for turquoise and stuff like that and go back and tumble it. And, you know, I didn't really think a whole lot of it. I just thought they were pretty. Um, and then I kind of went on into the, the matrix of life and kind of didn't really think a whole lot about it um, until I was in my, I guess, late 30s. And mm -hmm. then that, everything kind of started shifting and the crystals became a lot more important. What was the, the point where you believed that they were more than just crystal? Did you ever, there was any sort of... Uh power related to crystals or spiritual nature to them was it always just for their beauty or was there a point where you realized there's something more going on um so there was a point when I realized there was more going on I had um a surgery that kind of went wrong and um I wasn't healing and so mm -hmm. I kept having pockets of fluid uh come up and they had to go back in and drain out the fluid and sew me back up again over and over. And it got to a point <clears throat> where, <clears throat> excuse me, it got to, <laughs> I can't talk. <clears throat> it got to a point where I was packing my own um, like gauze into the wound um, instead of going back to the doctor every other day, it was really bad for like a year. And they had to go back in surgically and put in tubes to drain the fluid. <clears throat> and so I have, um, an adult daughter and she came over and brought me some crystals that were passed down from my grandmother. And, um, you know, I, I was like, okay, I'll see what happens here. And so I would hold them and all of a sudden, uh, about, I guess, three or four days later, it just dried up. The, the pocket of the fluid just dried up. And so I asked her if I could keep one of them. And then that kind of led to, and it was amethyst. That was the very mm -hmm. first. That, that's kind of like, they call it the gateway crystal, you know, <laughs> amethyst. Right. Uh, and then, I don't know, I just kind of started looking into it and, um, started having dreams about crystals and mm -hmm. looked into getting certified as a crystal healer. And that's when it kind of all changed. My house is now full of crystals, all types of crystals. But whenever I meditate um, with you and your channel, this is the one that I use the most. This is a Lemurian quartz. And mm -hmm. so um, these are the most magical crystals that I've worked with by far. Really? Yes. So it's not it's not just that that particular one. That's not just quartz. What makes it Lemurian quartz? Do you know any of the details behind that? Because there's quartz so, all over you can get, right? So sure. yeah, there's quartz all over the world. That's the number one. Um, I mean, people collect quartz from everywhere and, and they're right. all beautiful and have their own properties. But um, a Lemurian will have barcodes. I don't know if you can see the bar. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and so what you can do to, to activate the crystal, which is something that I've been able to do. And I thought, you know, a lot of people could do this, but apparently that's not so 
it's not the case. Um, mm. Whenever I talk to people about it, they usually are like, okay, you know, that's interesting. Right. Um, but you run your, your thumb down the barcodes. And so usually whenever I'm in a deep meditative state, um, I'll have one of these by my hand because I, I get into the state where I'm, you know, relaxed. And then, you know, I, it's usually one of your meditations that I'm listening to. And then, you know, you start kind of seeing, or I start seeing colors and then, um, different things. And that's when I know, all right, I pick this up and then you kind of just trace your thumb back and forth on the barcode and you turn it around and just try to touch every single part of the crystal. And I've actually been able to, um, light these crystals up where they actually look like lasers are pointing out of them. Oh, wow. And yeah, it's really, and it's not something, well, I guess a lot of people will know now, but it's not something I really tell a lot of people because it is different, you know? Yeah. Well, in my I'm own experience, and I'm just following my own psychic intuition, when I um, I found crystals to be a, a sort of conduit where it, it stores light, like I can build up chi and light, and I can actually put it in the crystal, and then when I come back to it, I can still feel what I had left in the crystal. It's, to me, that's been the biggest realization, at least on a psychic or conscious level, is that with these crystals, uh, the light that I might use doesn't dissipate. It's like a storage device, and it can even be a broadcaster on some level. At least that's my experience with it. it, it is, is that how you're interpreting? With, it's particular with quartz. Quartz is like liquid light kind of frozen yeah. into a single thing so i can enter it, i can i can put light and programming into that crystal because it's naturally just sitting there waiting to be programmed right that's correct yeah i i wear quartz every single day i wear this necklace and i i speak my intentions into this necklace every single day um and so you can constantly be giving them more information it's not just a one-time thing but like you said it is like a storage where somebody, you know, 100,000 years from now will find this piece of quartz and they'll get information from what I've stored in it or, or what you've stored in your quartz. And it's, it's kind of a, you know, um, they actually have crystals that are called record keepers, um, which is a, a raised triangle on, mm -hmm. on the crystal. Um, and that is, um, you know, they say that's like extra storage or extra information that's supposed to be released to the person who comes in contact with that type of crystal. Um, and then if you want to, if you have a crystal, a quartz, and you're wanting to remove energy, you can also remove the energy as well um, by cleansing it with sage or salt water. So a lot of times when I get new crystals in my house, before I work with them, I always give them a salt bath or um, I sage them or right. I put them out the sun to cleanse them, you know, so. Yeah, I've seen in your videos, you'll you'll take it to the beach and, and then wash it in the ocean right there, right? Yeah. So that, that, just, that just eliminates whatever anybody else has put into the crystal, even by accident, right? <laughs> just sort of cleanses it so it's back to its pure zero state. Exactly. So there, there's just so many crystals. Before we get into that, um, I want to talk about crystal healing and, and, and what that involves. And you, you said you had training on that. So yes. when you're using for crystals for healing, tell me more. How can I use my crystals for healing and, and how does it work? And w w Give us some ideas of, of what techniques you use. Yeah. So whenever I have a client, um, I will kind of ask them what's going on. And then I'll pick um, different crystals to lay actually on their body uh, to represent their chakras. So, you know, clear quartz, and then I'll put like a lapis lazuli, uh, and then something that will be great for opening their throat chakra, something green for their heart, and so forth. And then I, I use wands. This is one of my main wands that I use for crystal healing. Um, mm -hmm. And this has chlorite quartz, which is really a great uh, physical healer. And so I use um, this wand in one hand, and then I have selenite, which is just pure divine white light. Um, it never needs to be cleared or cleansed or charged. So I'll have that to stabilize the energy. And then I'll use this in my right hand and I'll actually deplete all the chakras. I'll go counterclockwise and go all the way down, sweep it all the way down their body. 
to deplete all any any negative energy, anything that's going on, it just takes it all out. Right. And I'll use the selenite and um, I'll just kind of cleanse their body and do some sound healing and stuff like that. And then I'll go back in and start at the top. And then I use the wand and I do it in a clockwise. And then I go up to source. So I'm connecting with the source energy uh, to fill their chakras back up with what is needed for them instead of what they're struggling with. Now, I, I, I want to talk about specific crystals, but I've had experiences where, you know, people give me a crystal. Hey, you, you should try this out. And it doesn't. It's not a good thing. It's a magnifier. I get into an argument or something happens. So not all crystals are wonderful and perfect, right? There are some that are somewhat dangerous or can be misused. So let's start with that. Are there crystals you you, you should be careful with that you recommend that, you know, that, that maybe can have adverse effects? Um, I've never met a crystal that I didn't love. So an adverse <laughs> effect, <laughs> I don't know. That would be kind of a strong conclusion, but you definitely, if you're wanting to say you're a public speaker and you're, you're wanting to uh, have a debate, you're not going to want to have probably like rose quartz or something sweet and like something like that. You're probably going to want to have uh, like a lapis lazuli, like a blue, something that will really help you open your throat chakra or blue appetite or something that is going to be really strong or maybe even something like fire quartz, that's going to really help you have that fiery energy to help you promote your point. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah, I mean, there are definitely crystals that beginners, I would not recommend, um, like working with Moldavite, which is a tech, a tech type. I would not mm. re uh, recommend this for someone who's just starting out working with crystals, you know, right. to here, here's some Moldavite. Um, so is, it is Moldavite. Now that's, that's something I carry with me all the time i even have my wedding ring connected to it at all times on my heart um doesn't feel it feels like it's not a crystal to me it when i feel the energy of, of my moldavite it's nothing similar to any other crystal it's something else does that make yeah. sense totally because it's not a crystal yeah it's not a crystal. um it, it's it's a tectite and so a tectite um was actually formed from a crash of a meteor onto the earth. Right. And so it has parts of a meteor actually in the Moldavite. And Mold Moldavite is only one type of tectite, but it's not a it's not a crystal and it actually comes from outer space. Right. So it it with my own psychic awareness as I I I immediately noticed the Moldavite before over any other crystal I could immediately feel it um uh, physically there was an actual definite physical effect lightheadedness uh, the energy was different and uh so as i started to um use it um and become aware of my psychic senses it seemed to form a bubble around me where i, I was protected like it was e even you know people you know, the, the psychic attacks or whatever it was like this this shield of protection uh, wherever I went, my, my wife has the same thing. She's always got to have at least some Moldavite in her earrings or, or her necklace or her ring sometime if she leaves the house. Right. Yeah. Um, that's my own personal experience with that. So maybe I'm wrong. And I, and I, and that's why I ask, is, is, is that somewhat um, normal for an understanding of Moldavite or perhaps am I un misunderstanding its effect? No, that's, uh, that's right on. I mean, a lot of people do connect with Moldavite and it is extremely protective, and you'll notice that a lot of, um, and I know that you're not big on wanting to know if you are or if you're not right, stars, right. but yeah. if you are attracted to Moldavite nine times out of 10, there's something going on there. So yes. there's some kind of protection from, from um, the galactic beings or star beings is, is what I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think so too. Uh, there's, who knows, but there's the argument that the Moldavite comes uh, from another planet in our solar system that after it exploded, right? It could be a um, mall deck, who knows, right? Um, maybe it, it, it attaches me to memories from some other life on that planet. So, uh, you know, you you have uh, mentioned to me that you, you might be also a star seed as well. And you, you, you've had those, do you think the crystals have awakened memories of past lives in some cases? Um, so 
I, I have a little bit of a block, I think, when it comes to past lives on Earth, but right. I am able to astral travel and re remote view. I'm still trying to get a handle on all all of the things um, because it's it's only been over the past four years where um, I'm telling you the wherever I put it, the Lemurian seed is the one that when I hold it, it beings come in my room i mean of course if i open my eyes they're not there it's just a, in a meditative state right. um but still yeah this is definitely i think a link or a key um to other dimensions to um other other timelines even yeah it's, i mean i get i get the same feeling too that mm. um, there's some sort of link especially when i speak to people that that believe to be star seeds and and they also have this interest in crystals. There seems to be a universal link that 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 somehow these crystals are a connection, perhaps, or awakening memories. There's some sort of intuitive connection with these materials or substances, which um, you know I think that I I believe in psychometry on some level. That as I think the whole Earth is becoming more psychic, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, when 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 we don't realize it, we just think that it's just our thoughts. But when we touch objects we become sensitive to the history of the object, right? And so uh, for some people that have that frequency within their, you know, their, their soul's framework, when they touch certain crystals, it awakens a frequency that maybe not be there. Maybe it's not memories, but it's a knowing, it's a certain energy um, that mm -hmm. that's at least in my experience. That's why I wanted to, you know, get your thoughts on that. Yeah, and it's definitely, people will be attracted to certain crystals more than others. And I think based upon their history, and they, and you're right, they, they might not even know why they're attracted to it. And then they meditate and they'll be able to see, see things or, or gain information or insight that they didn't have before. And to go back and answer one of your other questions that I don't think I answered fully, you were asking me about um, where the Lemurian seeds come from. Mm -hmm. And so it's believed that the, the Pleiadian um, star group planted these um, for people to find, to get information about the history of the earth. Oh, wow. Um, and so they, some people believe that they're only found in Brazil. I happen to believe that they were found, uh, that they are able to be found in other places. Um, but they're very distinct in, in the way that they look with the barcodes on them. Um, but they definitely hold a lot of information about the history of humanity. Right. I just wish there was some way we could document this scientifically because, you know, I, at least, you know, 30, 40 people have clicked on to this and then they've already left because they don't believe it. Um, the, the, the standard rational thinking says, you know, scientists have not found anything with these crystals or nothing more than crystals. Uh, I do believe if, if instruments become sensitive at some point and we can study the radiation from certain objects as we start to understand energy, that we will be able to identify certain patterns with crystals. That's my only sure. thing. I just, uh, I, I think that we're in an, an age right now where that's not possible. And so a lot of what you and I are talking about may sound like woo-woo. And yeah. I do believe there may be a science behind it, maybe a hundred years from now when instruments become more fine tuned or we know what we're looking for right mm -hmm. right um it was interesting i i was just in denver for the the gym show and i was having dinner and you know the guy next to me i was just sitting by myself and he's like what are you in town for and i told him and we ended up talking about crystals and he says oh my gosh you need to talk to my girlfriend because we just bought this um, like quantum, like med bed technology thing mm -hmm. for their house. And um, he was describing it. And I said, well, that sounds like what happens whenever I meditate with Lemurian. He's like, oh my gosh, that happens to my girlfriend too. And he kind of looked around and I go, I know it's weird. And people don't really talk about it. He's like, yeah, you're like the first person who's ever brought this up. So what, what is your, what, what, as you become, one thing when you're around crystals, become more tuned to them. Um, just mm -hmm. by being in their in their presence. So what is it like when you go to one of these uh, events where it's all crystals or you go to one of these huge crystal um, um, swap meets or, you know, I when I go, it's thrumming with energy. It's dangerous. I'll just start spending so much money. Um, it's just thrumming <laughs> with energy. I don't see how people can work there. You know, I've even commented on people like, how can you guys work here? It's just like thrumming. I can hear it. 
it's like whoa like when when you're around a, a a ton tons of crystals like a lot a lot yeah. right i wanted yeah. to get your feelings on that if you've ever experienced that when you're in a, a just it's it's overwhelming right when it's super concentrated so for me what happens is time speeds up really quickly and i get i get very honed in on on certain things that i'm looking at and all of a sudden um, time has, a lot of time has passed. Like I, I got to the, uh, the show at, I think I walked in the door at 10 30 in the morning and I was checking out with the last person and he says, well, it's the end of the day. And I said, there's no way. And I looked down at my watch and it was 5 30 PM. And I'm like, but I'm not finished yet. You know, yeah. but I, I don't get that overwhelming sensation i just it, it feels like a lot of excitement like way too much excitement at the same time where i just have to kind of you know what i don't know it? i'll pick up i'll pick up one piece and just like look at it and kind of get lost in it and i'll have to <laughs> snap now, I, have, I have friends that have this uh that that need to taste the crystal they'll put it up to their tongue um have you heard of this phenomenon uh, my, my, my teacher actually does that. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard of so it, it's but not I, completely I crazy. Know, right? I didn't know it was a real thing. Right. So when let's talk about the different crystals, what crystal would be really good for me to, to enhance love in my life? Is it always just rose quartz or are there other combinations? What would you, what would you say? Um, I love rhodochrosite for, for compassion and love. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorites. I'm actually wearing wearing rhodochrosite right now. It's a really it's a really special crystal that will definitely help with that. Um, there's anything pink, anything that you like. Kunzite is another one um, mm -hmm. that's actually going to be like a lilac color. But uh, kunzite's a beautiful crystal to bring in love, and also if people are like trying to get pregnant, that's a really good one for that. Um, mm -hmm. But there's so many different crystals for for love anything pink or green anything that's going to be heart centered is going to be good for love now the the, the black obsidian the different black crystals i always have a different um sort of effect with that it's drawing energy it doesn't feel like other crystals and uh, what in general can you use those for so black obsidian is going to be super protective um, and a lot mm -hmm. of people make um blades out of black obsidian to do like cut a uh, cord cutting ceremonies mm -hmm. um, to cut through energy is very good it was used by the aztec uh, indians and so yeah. kind of what it was known for um it kind of has a little bit of a darker history right. um i don't work with a whole lot of black obsidian but it's really good to have a piece in a room where it's just it's just pulling in that negative energy uh, pulling it out of your area and pulling it. So if you're wearing it, you're pulling in negative energy to that spot. Do you, it's not something that you would recommend wearing then if it's pulling um, Not necessarily. I probably said that the wrong way. Um, so what it's doing is it's, it's pulling it out of your, out of your area. So yeah, you'll definitely, it, it probably does collect it, but you'll, you'll want to cleanse it often because anything like smoky quartz, it does the same thing. It's going to pull in and transmute that negative energy into your space. So what it's actually doing is it's kind of filtering that energy. So it's not just keeping it in the crystal. Um, it's more like a filter. Think of it like um, like an air purifier for your energy. Now, when you have two magnets, they 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 you know they push off. So I, I kind of think of that with crystals. When I I'm always wearing my Moldavite. I sleep with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Is it interacting with the, is that why the, um, I'm avoiding black obsidian or the, it doesn't feel right? Like they, they're they like, they're working against each other. Could that be? I could see that actually. I'm um, now that you're saying that. Yeah, I could see that happening. I could see that not being a, a great combination. I always think about um, like Dambrite with Moldavite or quartz with Moldavite, anything that's going to be more of an upper chakra. Um, mm -hmm. I don't like mixing Moldavite with anything that's that's going to be pulling the energy down because I want it I want it to be, you know, right. um, more flighty. Feel I like that feeling. I don't like to be grounded as much as most people. Right, right. So, uh, what what let's what other crystals can we use? Is there a crystal that that will always you know that that awakens 
the solar plexus, the more yellow oriented uh, yeah. crystals, what, what what would you recommend for that? So for the solar plexus, I think citrine is is wonderful. So that's going to be your solar plexus is your your power center. It's going to be um, helping you project to the world, you know, who who you are, and it's going to help you manifest. Um, prosperity and, and all the things. So wearing um, anything yellow, but especially like yellow appetite, um, citrine, those are the, those are two really important ones that I can think of um, for your solar plexus. And then as you, as you go down, like to the root, you're, you know, of course you're going to want to wear red because red is going to help you feel safe and protected because we start, as you know, you're, you're well, yeah. um, in, and all this stuff, but yeah, you know, I kind of wake up in the morning and I'll, I'll think, what am I lacking today? What do I feel like I need the most? And today I felt like I needed to be more grounded and I needed to feel just a little, a little more held by the earth. So I wear red. Right, right. It's going to be a so. little bit different. Is there a crystal that you can wear that, um, that you can read through when people are lying. I've, there, I've had, and I don't remember the name of it. I've had somebody recommend a crystal. When I, when I would wear it, I could totally tell when somebody was bullshitting me or not. When and it, I felt like it was an amplifier in my discernment. Is there a particular crystal that does that? Um, I am not thinking of one right off the top of my head, but I, I kind of have a bullshit meter in my system so Already, yeah. <laughs> like yeah so i don't really need a crystal for that but um i mean you could always program your clear quartz say you know hey you know and i, I always tell it to do it, it looks silly but i do talk my intentions into the crystal but you clear quartz is actually you can um uh this can mimic any crystal in the world like if you don't have a certain type of crystal it mm -hmm. can actually be programmed to be that crystal and then it also say like you want to wear your moldavite with quartz. It magnifies the and intensifies the energy of the moldavite. Right. Um, have you ever using? Um, it's the best way to. Is there a crystal that you use to awaken the third eye that that help and activates the pineal gland? Yes, um, lapis lazuli is excellent for that. And I also think that um, Agni Manatite, which is a, a tectite, another tectite, is excellent for that too. It's uh, also nicknamed Pearl of Divine Fire. Um, mm -hmm. It's only found in Indonesia and most of it's underneath the water. But if you get a piece of that and put it on your third eye while you meditate, or even Moldavite's excellent for opening your third eye. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but those are, those are the top three that I would say for opening the third eye, but even, um, uh, let's see, sorry. I was no, no. <laughs> is there, no, it's cool. Is there, is, is there any, um, outside of crystals? What, what, what do you think of the power of, of fossilized objects? Why is it, why is it, I find such power in those, even though I don't hear discussion of that with people that are using crystals, you know, different fossilized objects, it's just the sure. history or what, what, what is your impression of those? You'll always find them at a crystal shop, right? So. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I collect um, shark teeth, dinosaur bones, seashells. I've got so many seashells right. and they have just as much energy as, you know, a crystal. You know, you have the the big, um, I can't remember what those, the big ones that you get in the, in like Bahamas. Right. What are they called? You know what I'm talking about? You can put it up to your ear and you can actually hear the ocean. Right, right. Just the, the big seashells that you can get, right? Yeah. 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 So it, it's absolutely though. And like the shark teeth, people um, love collecting shark teeth for helping them like gain strength and, and power and like right. one person bought one for their middle child to help them, you know, feel more confident. So yeah, totally. My, my general theory is that we're in third density on the brink of fourth density. Fourth density light is totally flooded the zone. And mm. so everybody's just becoming an incrementally, a little tiny bit more psychic and aware every day imperceptible, but it's a little bit more every day, like a, a drop of water in a bathtub. And so as this happens, 
slowly we start to become um, energized and magnetized by objects around us. It can it, it, it can be old books uh, it, and, and particularly we become more attracted to crystals because they hold more energy from the past than, than other objects. And so more and more as, as every day goes by, these objects seem to resonate with us. We sometimes don't know why people find themselves buying them, you know, whatever. Um, that's my, my theory on this. And then every single, you know, a couple of years from now, more and more people are going to be declaring, Hey, you know, these crystals actually are doing something more than just um, making me look good. Or, you know, there's something else going on. Um, and what is your feeling on it? Because it is, it's, it's a phenomenon. Of course, people were using crystals back in the sixties and stuff like that, but there's a unique phenomenon going now um, in our, uh, in our interrelation with objects, particularly with crystals. And so that's why one of the reasons I want to bring you on, because I think it's a phenomenon that, you know, more and more people are becoming aware that these crystals hold light as we become tuned to the light, particularly fourth density lights that are, you know, fourth density light, which is more complex and dense. Um, mm. What is your impression of that as somebody that's with crystals all the time? <laughs> yeah. So I have a, a kind of a weird take on, um, on crystal, like the crystal craze, uh, because whenever I first started collecting crystals, they were not nearly as popular as they are now. It's almost like it's become a new currency. And I know that mm. sounds really weird to say, but I mean, people are really, they're, they're selling off their belongings to buy crystals because they're needing the energy from the crystals. And I know that sounds really weird to somebody and I, I'm married to a physician. So can you imagine <laughs> the, the conversations we have in our household? I can imagine. Yeah. So what is the, the rarest crystal that's the hardest for you to find? The rarest crystal. Um, let's see. I mean, so so I just came across a new one called the Prophecy Stone. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't, no. So that's something kind of um, rare and unusual, and they don't have a whole lot of, and I, I got a, a few of those. I'm looking at them across the room now. Can you grab one of those for me? Um, but they're found in Egypt. And mm -hmm. um, so I'll be excited. I've been sleeping with it every night and having really crazy dreams, very vivid. Um, but they, they're not really that beautiful to look at. But um, yeah, kind of cool, that? yeah, yeah. It's another black. It's one of the black ones, right? Yeah. So it, all black's going to draw energy. That's just you know not, that's the nature of the color itself. So the it's drawing energy. So the interesting thing about the prophecy stone is it started out as one type of metal, and then it ended up a completely different type of metal. So it's um, so some of them were pyrites. Some of them were. Um, um, like magnetite and so in summer iron and so they're just layers upon layers of different types of metals so it's not even necessarily a crystal right um, but stuff like this you know you come across and you find this rare stuff that right <laughs> it blows it's, my mind it's just so cool you know that there's a i have a local crystal shop that, that uh, a geologist basically owns and he's not about the the woo woo effects but there's so much to learn about the, the different kinds of crystal, the different places where they're finding it, um, the geological record in, in you know, certain places. That's what I find super fascinating. You, you could be not even interested in the spiritual effects of crystal, but the, uh -huh. the, the, the geological you know, the nature of these crystals and, and the way it tells about the history of the earth. Super fascinating. Right. Another one is Numite. So that, that mine is completely closed and you can only find Numite in Greenland. And that's one of the oldest crystals on the planet. And I'm telling you, if so I also have a, a, a pyramid triangle like this that's new might, and I'll mm -hmm. wear it sometimes during meditations. And I'm telling you, it looks like circus lights are going off in my room. Oh, wow. Crazy. So yeah, the the the, the pyramid structure, you know, the it, it seems to do something to the crystal when, when crystallizing pyramids, it seems to focus and magnify almost every single kind. Uh, you know, it's what, what is your impressions of that? That, 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 that by putting the crystals into a pyramid form, it seems to have some sort of additional effect. 
Yeah. So like I was talking about earlier, the, the record keepers on certain crystals are in the shape of a pyramid. And so, you know, and in all religions and everything, you always have the Trinity, you always have the three, you know, and so it's a very solid, um, to me, there it's, it's a foundation. You have like the mother, um, the father, and then the, the child. It's always kind of like that building, a, building of a house in numerology, you know, the number three is like, like a building of, of a family. And so to me, a pyramid is always going to be like that representation of, of a, of a three. And also, um, whenever I meditate at one way, and this is kind of a little bit, not the question you were asking me, but, yeah. um, as far as a pyramid goes, um, you, you've probably seen me online, you know, where I open a circle with selenite to protect my energy field. Um, another way you can open a circle, this is a galactic circle, is to put your, your hands like this in the form of a pyramid and push out from your solar plexus out and then upside down back to your solar plexus three times. Mm -hmm. And that will help protect you as well. So I don't know. I just think of it as very a very protective um shape right so i don't know if your, what is your, your opinion about the other charging methods uh you know putting and putting the crystals in the sun or the the charging plates that you can get where you, it's sort of like a a flower of life enhanced you know organ energy um chargers what is your experience with those what do you think about that um so i think the best way to to charge a crystal is um, well first you're going to want to cleanse it with salt water that's super important unless it's something like selenite which will, will um, melt in the water so there's certain crystals that you can't put in water okay um, and then cleansing them with sage or you can bury some people bury their crystals I don't recommend that but some people bury them in the earth mm -hmm. one thing that I found really helpful is I make my own um, like I, I dry out flowers and so I'll put them in a bag with flowers or I'll put them in a bowl, like a, a fluorite bowl or some other kind of charging bowl, put the crystals in and then sprinkle in the dried flowers on top of that. So those are ways to clear. So you always want to clear before you charge. So then you can charge by putting them in the sunlight. Um, you can put them on top of selenite. Selenite's an excellent way to charge your crystals. Mm -hmm. And then the full moon, but you just want to make sure it's not an eclipse moon because that energy can kind of be a little bit, not so, not so on the straight and narrow. Like you don't really know what you're going to get when you're charging under an eclipse. <laughs> right. But a regular full moon, it works. Regular full moon is, is amazing. My, okay. One of my favorite ways though, is the sun. I love the energy from the sun. So there's going to be a different energy associated with charging in the sun versus the moon. So there is uh, a ton of fake crystals out there. And some, yeah. you know, sometimes it's really hard to tell uh, fake quartz, fake Moldavite all the time. Um, is there ways that we can distinguish, you know, the fake ones and, and, and the real ones? That's funny. I was actually talking to my friend yesterday about um, one of my next YouTube videos that I'm going to do. I, I, I have fake Moldavite and fake Malachite from whenever I first started collecting crystals. And now mm. it's, to me, it's so obvious and it just, you know, but I've held on to it just to, I, I don't know why, I guess to kind of show myself or show other people, Hey, this is what it looks like, but I'm going to crack them open on my, on my YouTube channel <laughs> and show like what it looks like. Um, it's very obvious. Like you said, like the, the Moldavite, it, it almost looks like um, like a, a glass jar or something, you know, green glass. It doesn't right, right. look it doesn't look anything like Moldavite. But yeah, there's if you look at quartz and it has a lot of bubbles in it, that's a mm. really telltale sign. And then you can actually put a black light on certain crystals. And if they don't light up, then you'll know that they're fake. So there's a lot of that going on. I rarely see smooth or, or polished Moldavite that I, I feel is legit. A lot of the polished Moldavite, I'm always like reticent. It doesn't feel right. It, it, it seems like it's a harder crystal to polish, first of all. Um, uh -huh. There are some good ones, right? Polished yeah. Moldavite, yeah. Um, so my necklace is actually uh, basted polished Moldavite. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, 
you know, a lot of people that make jewelry will make it, but I, I prefer the the straight up, the bubbly looking natural Moldavite the way it is. My impression when I go and, and shop, and I'm always looking where the Moldavite is. There's such a, uh, a there's, there is not a lot of Moldavite. There's, it seems like there's less Moldavite than diamonds out there. Um, usually most shops will have four or five in a little corner. Um, mm -hmm. it, so there is also, it seems like some scarcity in Moldavite, right? Oh yeah, that's probably going to be the most limited um, tectite or you know stone out there is is going to be moldavite. That's really rare. Right. So I I was joking around. I said I think I I bought all the moldavite in Denver. <laughs> oh yeah. Week. Well, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't a lot. Um, they, they never have a ton. Um, no, it could fit all in one bag, but still, <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. Can you imagine, I, you know, I see online every once in a while, so somebody has this big old chunk of Moldavite. Can you imagine what that would feel like to be around that? Because I, I, I've tried to wonder if it would, if it's even more intense or similar, or just the same, right? I imagine it would be pretty intense. I think it would if you had it just sitting there all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love bathing with, uh, with different crystals. And so I would love to take a bath with a big chunk of Moldavite like just, that. And just yeah, like, yeah. I mean, that would just be like the ultimate. <laughs> so cleaning other than selenite, cleaning crystals, you know, um, is, is good with, but always with salt water. You, you Is that what you're with salt is what you're saying? There's salt water or you can use sage smoke, like get a, um, a bundle of sage and then just smudge it. Okay. Um, so that's another great way. Um, and then sometimes people will either use the earth and like uh, clean them that way. I, I don't recommend it because then you end up with a dirty crystal, right. um, you know, to each their own. Right. Um, but I absolutely love cleansing i love bringing a bunch of crystals to the beach and cleansing them in the ocean that is my very very favorite way to cleanse a crystal now, because it you, brings it back to that you know i, I agree there's got to be something um, i've always believed going to the the ocean is cleansing for me if i even if i'm at the ocean i, I got to go out for at least 30 seconds just drop my head because it feels like that's cleansing to me right so it's got to be to the crystal too yeah, I mean, if you think about it, standing in the ocean, you know, with your your arms held out, you have the sun beaming down on you, the earth, the wind is blowing in your face, and then you have the water, and then you have your feet in the earth. You have all the four elements right there. I mean, how much? Yeah, that's like the best. <laughs> it's true. So, so anybody that wants to get crystals from you, they can go to atxcrystals.com, and you also um, often do um, live shows on on facebook where you, you will sell your crystals at discounts you have some great deals you constantly have new stuff coming in um amazing polished objects really cool stuff so um that you know it thank you i mean it, it's going to be interesting to see how crystals evolve and the way that people treat them and, and understand them and you know i'm just i'm fascinated by it and i still don't know that much uh about it so thank you for coming on and, and teaching me just a little bit more uh, yeah we'll have to get you in for a um, crystal healing session so and i know you know it's not always just about healing sometimes it, it'll help you uh look at past lives and different things so there's all kinds of things that you can get out of one of those sessions very very cool so <laughs> atxcrystals.com and so thank you for coming on. We'll have to come on and talk some more. I, I know I'm going to see you at the Neville Goddard event. So I'm looking forward to that. And so thank you for supporting the channel all this time. It's, it's uh, sure. I, I appreciate it greatly. You, you've been there um, from the beginning. And so it means a lot. And I, I appreciate that. So. Well, thank you so much. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. <laughs> thank you.